<laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to an episode of Fate with Linda. Today is Friday. Friday. All day. Something is bothering me, I just noticed. This is too over there. Um, today's Friday and I'm going to make, um, I'm making, what am I making again? Barley soup. Beef barley soup. So. It's only the end of February. I've been asking for it all winter. Yeah, I made it once before a couple of months, about a month ago. It's really just like out there, guys. But I'm not going to start singing again. I might have to. I'm gonna have to pause the video. Why? After last night's video. Why? <laughs> so I'm gonna I love my voice. I'm gonna peel some carrots and slice up some carrots because we need carrots in the beef body soup. Husband yeah. doesn't think so, but we have carrots. Why? We have to have carrots. It flavors oh, it. Onion. Um, I have to get a couple of onions. I think I need some onions. We're running, we're running low on onions. Who are barking? I'm a lot of havoc because everybody's home. It's a snow day today. I'm here. Yeah, I'm in New York. And my daughter's home. Daddy's home. She would normally be a programmer for an hour and a half. Big deal. And um, Cooper's, you know, being his normal self and everything. So I'm sorry, guys, in advance for all the noise. But this is what you get uh, with Create with Linda. So I'm sure you're used to it. I'm going to put this back just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Did you just belch on national TV? First of all, this ain't national TV. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? Because I heard it. I apologize if you heard that. He really just thinks that he, I'm, not on, I'm not on video. It doesn't really matter because I always tell him it's real life. It's real life, so he always brings, he always throws that up to me. If I say to him, shh, or don't do that, he'll be like, it's real life, Linda. So, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna peel these carrots, guys, and then I'm gonna chop them up small. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna show you the meat that I have. Um, yesterday I went to Stop and Shop and I got a couple of packages of, um, I think it's Chuck. Chuck. I was looking at the Chuck, you know, the boneless Chuck, and I was looking at the bone in Chuck, and I felt like the boneless, the bone in Chuck would probably be better, and it looked better than the boneless. Because on the bone, you know, it's much, to me, it's much more tender. But it's chuck, so you gotta, it's, it's meant to cook a long time, just like, right, you know, just like um, rump roast, butt roast, you know, bottom round, you know, for, um, for um, a pot roast and all of that. So um, that's what I got, because I want this meat to be able to be really, really tender, like stew meat or whatever. I don't want it to be tough, because that's the, you know, that's not good. So I'm gonna peel the rest of the Get a couple of onions. I think I'm running low on onions. I have to get to the store on um, tomorrow and get some onions. Um, Cause like, if you don't have onions in the house, to me you don't have anything. Just like garlic and just like milk and eggs. I always need. If I don't have anything else in my house, if I have butter, butter, milk, eggs, bread. And what else did I just say? Bacon. Really? You think? Bacon, maybe. I don't know. Those are the, really the, the, the staples that I have to milk that I have to have in my house for me to feel secure. <laughs> what about a husband? Ah, I could take those or leave them. You can do it out. We right? can take them or leave them. You can do it out, man. I can't do it out, my hubby. Yeah, right. I was just listening to uh, Barry Manilow. Oh man! Oh, no, please don't start. When um, when I um, pause with you guys, I listen to my music because I just love the music. So I like well, I the music in between. I pause it when I say action. That's why I sing to you. He sings to me. He's like that. Um, what's that movie? We just saw that on the on the on the preview, remember? The what? um Serio Bizergiac. What is his name? I have no idea who you're talking about. He was um he was um oh my god. 
my mind is so crazy right now. He was, you know, singing to her at the window. Syria, Syria, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Syria, Bernogiac or something. Like that. <laughs> he can't really sing, and he means very well. He's got an amazing heart, but he really can't sing. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Syria. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't like my singing. You hear that? So listen guys, we're attempting it again. On Sunday we're gonna go to see Dawn again with Chatham. I always get this for Chatham Tatum. No. Chatham Tatum. No, Tatum Channing, isn't it? Whatever. Yeah. I can't get his name right ever. Anyway, we're going Sunday. We're gonna go to another movie theater. I'll wait for the one we went to because it's a better one anyway and we just don't want to go over here that movie did it right now because honestly I'm we're 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 traumatized. Traumatized so, <laughs> come on. <laughs> traumatized. You're traumatized. I, I said to my I said to my daughter, she was ordering the tickets, I said, please make sure you request a, a theater without a ceiling that's gonna leak. Because I'm just uh, nervous. So anyway, we're gonna go Sunday to see the movie again. So excited guys. And maybe we should sue him because we're traumatized. You know what I'm mainly excited about? What do you think I'm mainly excited about, Bill? Huh? What do you think I'm mainly excited about about the movie? Popcorn. <laughs> popcorn is that sick. Popcorn there at the movie theater just tastes like no other popcorn there. You know, I just don't get it. It's like you make it at home and it doesn't taste. It doesn't taste like that. I don't know what it is, but it's so good. So yes, I'm looking forward to that. So that's gonna be good. Um, looking forward to Sunday. So what I really should do is plan something, maybe a crock pot for Sunday. This way, when we come home, we have it. But I gotta figure out what that is today. It's uh, Friday, right? so I gotta figure out um, what we're going to do. We gotta put something in the crock pot. We gotta figure it out. And these, these these family members too. Yeah, uh, pain in the asses. They really are. No. Not everybody likes crock pot meal. It has to be a certain thing. Like, they're, they're pain in the butt. So coopy, like, coopy, coopy, but I don't know. I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure out something because I don't want to spend money again. We went we we out that day and it was, we bought Chick fil A, you know, it's an expense. So, um, we'll figure out something. I have lots of stuff in there. Oh, wait, Sunday I was supposed to make the pork roast. <laughs> oh, no. What's I'll the, do it for you. Oh, man. you know what? I'll make the pork. Take out the. Take out the pork roast. I'll make it tomorrow. I'll make the pork roast tomorrow. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Can you bring my water in? Sure. Please. I'm here to serve. He could be so. He could be so fresh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you brat. Thank you. you. Thank you, honey. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Like your mother used to say, you're gonna miss me while I'm gone. Yeah, my mother used to always sing that song years ago, later. It was probably very soon before she died. She used to always sing that. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. She used to always say that to us. And she was so right. She was so right. Hug and kiss your mom and your dad if you have them. Appreciate them guys, spend time with them, and just take a moment to reflect and say, you know what? You know, oh my God, I'm so lucky that I still have my mom, or I still have my dad, because when you don't have them, all you, all you feel like doing, all you feel like, all you do is wish you had them. My mom died, I, you guys know, I don't know if everybody remembers or knows or what, but my mom died like 20, almost 25, I think it, it'll be 25 years, right? Because Julie's 26, yeah. Just July, it'll be 25 years my mom's gone. And I can remember just always feeling so thankful that I had my dad for so many more years after. My dad passed away three years ago, so um, I had him like, we had him like a good 22 years after we lost my mom. So it was, thank God we had him, you know. Um, it was nice having one parent because, um, Comment down below if you feel this, but like when you, when you lose a parent, like in my experience, it, I felt like abandoned. Really I felt, no I'll never forget my first, oh uh, no, Brooke. I'll never forget my first birthday without my, without my mother. 
I wanted to just die because it just felt like you felt so alone and so lonely because the person that gave birth to you was no longer here to call you and say happy birthday. It might not think of a little, it might not be, you might not think it's such a big thing, but it is, it, it is a big thing. It's very, very, very emotional. And it took me a lot of years to not be so sad about that. You know, and then when my dad died, it was like all over again, you know. And my father was one of those, you know, happy birthday. Always called, always was there, always sent a card. Um, just was very, very hands-on as a father. And was very, very devastating when he developed Alzheimer's like two years before he died. And he never, he didn't send any more cards. He didn't call you. I went to the nursing home on my birthday and he didn't remember my birthday. That, you want to talk about devastating? Devastating. Now you guys know, I know that you guys, some of you guys know how that feels and know the feeling of that. So I'm sure there are people out there that you guys, that you guys can relate. Such a devastating feeling and so far. But, um, you know, it's something you live with every day and just gets better every day. It does, it does get better every day. Um, so if you're going through a loss now of a parent, of a, a great, you know, mentor in your life, that somebody that was like a parent to you, just try to remember the good times. And if they're still here, love them, guys. Love them, make memories. Spend time, even if it's 15 minutes a day, you'll feel better about it when they're gone. I'm telling you. I'm so telling you. All right, so that's my spiel. I don't know, I always have a spiel, don't I? Yeah, you got a spiel. I always got a spiel. Spiel, spiel, spiel. But, yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, nothing. Oh, driving me nuts. I love you. <laughs> uh, sure. I remember all my life. All right, so I'm going to cut these, um, I'm going to cut these pretty small, like on the diagonal, I guess. Shadows of a man, face to the window, crying. Yeah, but see, I don't like them that big, though. And that goes into love, there's just another day. Happy people pass my way. Um, do you remember um, Barry Manilow at the Copa, Copa Cabana? <laughs> I love that song. The hottest, the do 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 do. At the Copa, Copa Cabana. Music. I don't really remember all the words to that one. I like Barry Manilow. I'm going to cut this one, I think, in the middle, but I think it's too big. Like, it's too, they're too fat. I don't want them to be fat. So we'll cut them like that, I guess. Yeah, I really don't want the carrots that big. That's probably good. Cut them like you want, guys. You cut anything the way you want. See, those are a little bit smaller. I think I might cut these a little bit smaller. I just, I just don't want them really huge. And I think these are a little bit too big for me. So I'm gonna do that because it really, if I don't cut them this, if I don't, if I leave them big, they won't eat them. They won't. But. Jane. Oh. Yes. Okay, Daddy. So I was thinking about the the the, the um, concerts that I've that I've seen in my life. When I was younger, I saw. I think I saw. If you were born in the '60s, um, there was well, you were born in the '60s and you know in the '80s, but when you were a teenager and stuff, um, we saw. I saw Heart. I think I saw. Um, I saw Foreigner. Um, I think that's who I saw as a kid. You know, as a teenager. Um, but as an adult, 
I saw um, Luther Vandross and Diana Ross. Oh my God, guys, amazing. We saw Cher. One thing I remember about Cher was Cher went in and out so many times and changed her clothes that she was hardly on stage. Maybe she sang five songs because she was so in and out. That's all she did was go in and out of the off stage and change her clothes. Like really, we came to, okay. We came to see her sing, not for her to change her clothes. You know, that was an experience. So, but I I, really, I love Cher. So um, that was really good. Um, who else did we see? Um, Luther Vandross, Diana Ross, Cher. There was somebody else. That's right on the tip of my tongue. I don't know, I can't remember. Maybe there wasn't anybody else. Hmm. I'll have to think of it. But, um, yeah, I don't know why I just randomly started talking about that, but love the music. I think um, we all went, um, my sisters and cousins, we all went together to see these people in the city, New York City. It was a lot of fun. Um... Yeah, so that's who I saw as an adult, but I feel like I'm missing somebody. I feel like I'm really missing somebody. I'll think about it. Oh, well, me and Jenny and, and Bill saw um, sync. Jenny was an sync crazy lady. Um, and so we saw NSYNC. Um, who else? I don't know, I think that's really it. But yeah, that that's an experience. There's nothing like going to see your um the people you love music wise live. You know, it's an experience like no other. It really is. Um and like I said, she told you guys before, I wanted to see Elvis. But Elvis went and died on me. I was a teenager. He went and died on me. I was so mad and upset. I just want to be your loving teddy bear. So many songs of Elvis. Comment down below if you're an Elvis fan, guys. Elvis Presley. Love him. I want to go see Graceland. My husband's promising me he's going to take me. I'm waiting to go see Graceland before Lisa Marie Presley closes it up. Hope she doesn't. Alright. The carrots are done. I'm going to cut up the garlic and go get a couple onions. <clears throat> and then I'm going to start searing the meat. I'll show you the meat before I do that. Alright guys, so I have these. Now these were on sale. Um, these were on sale for, um, let's see, three, uh, four ninety nine a pound from six fifty a pound. So I got this package for eleven ninety three. It's three and a half pounds rather than um, than fifteen fifty one. So that was a good price. So this is a nice big one. And like I said, I got the one with the bone because I feel like it'll it's much more tender. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sear these first at it one at a time. And then I'm going to put them back in with the broth and everything. Okay. All right, guys. So um, I have this steak here to show you this one. This one I got for eight sixty three instead of eleven twenty. So that was a good deal. Stop and Chop had a few things that were, um, were on sale. All right. I put a little olive oil in the pan. Okay. This is a nice piece. I'm going to let this, I have it on the highest thing because I want it to get a little bit of a sear because um, that keeps that, that makes it have a nice flavor. All right, so I'm going to let this cook a little bit and then I'll turn it over. I'll season it, turn it over, and then put the other one in. Now, the reason why, guys, I'm making a lot of this beef, these two things, is because I want to have 
the beef left over because the beef is really, really tender and it's, it's a good, hello. Bill, can you come here a minute and fix this Katsi thing? Give me a second, guys. We had to fix the steak so we kept moving. Um, the reason why I'm making all these steaks, these two big steaks, is because um, the meat's gonna be so tender that I can have, make, make, probably take it out of the pot and use it for a meal too, which will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sear and then um, keep going. Season this one on the, that one side, now I'm gonna turn this one over. I'm gonna cook another minute, minute or two. And then I'm gonna put, take them both out. And I'm gonna probably um, clean out the pan a little bit just to get all like the black stuff off. And then I'll um, start adding the broth and everything. I have to, um, I didn't buy any um, beef broth. So I'm going to use chicken bouillons. I really am not crazy at using so many of these because it's, it's it has a lot of sodium, but um, I'll probably use four or five and the beef is going to flavor the water and make the soup, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm just gonna put a few of these in, guys. So I'm just gonna let this um, saute a little bit longer, and then that's what I'll do. I'll show you guys. All right, guys, so I cleaned that out, basically. I left those there because that's flavor right there. So what I'm gonna do is put the steaks back in. Now, all the steaks are gonna break off of the bone, and then I'll go in in a couple of hours I could, I could have made this in my crock pot, but I like doing it on the stove. I like having more control of it on the stove. So that's why I'm doing it on the stove. Um, and I'll go in a couple of hours and just check and make sure that, you know, just try to start getting the bones out of there. The bones have a lot of flavor, guys, so. Ooh! I already opened up six chicken bouillons and put them in the hot water here and they're not dissolved yet obviously they will dissolve more more milk and more milk i'm gonna put more water in here put it on low again give me one sec that I find is that the broth evaporates a lot. So I feel like I'm always assessing the soup, especially towards the end of it being done because I want it to have broth in it. And my family likes a lot of broth. They're very, very big on the broth. So I always assess it as it goes along, cook as it's cooking. And then the last half hour, I'll make sure it has more broth and I'll add more water to it, more broth to it or whatever. So for the last half hours this way, it ends up, you know, not soaking up all the broth when they go to eat it. Cause then there's no broth and everybody's like, where's the broth? <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Okay, so I'm gonna let this start simmering, then I'm gonna throw the carrots and stuff in. I'll show you guys. What I'm doing is I forgot to put the garlic in, so I'm just putting it in a little pot to get it a little bit roasted, a little bit sauteed, and then I'm gonna throw it into the pot. I don't wanna put it in there completely raw. I know it will cook in there, but I don't want it raw. I want it to have a little flavor on it. It's looking good. Another second. As soon as you start smelling the garlic, you know it's ready. Put all 
I put some water in there to get the rest of the garlic out and added it right into the soup. That's all flavor. All right, guys, so I added the barley. The meat is all broken. It's all falling apart now. I'm gonna take it out in a minute and, try and, and cut it up in small pieces because right now it's a little bit too big. I'll show you. See, there's still really big pieces. So I'm gonna cut it up into small pieces because we want it to be, have, um, be in small pieces. Now, I put a whole bag of the barley in here because um, this is a big pot of soup. So I'll show you the barley. The barley's starting to cook up. Here's the barley. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I decided this needs something, and this meal needs something else to go with it. So I'm gonna make homemade, homemade biscuits, guys. So I'm making buttermilk biscuits, so I have to make homemade buttermilk because I don't have any. So I'm just gonna put, so how you make homemade buttermilk is you put one cup of milk to one tablespoon, either lemon juice or um, white vinegar. And I have white vinegar. You let it sit for five minutes, and there you go. You have one, you have homemade buttermilk. So that has to just sit for a few minutes. And that's what I'm gonna do. Gotta make biscuits. So I'm gonna let this sit aside. I'm gonna take the meat out, strain the meat out, and um, then I'm gonna cut it up. I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do. Let me get a big bowl. This whole bowl is going to go back in there, so. See that? Got to give it a few minutes to uh Okay, so I'm going to take this out, bring this over to the table, and start cutting it up. All right, guys, so I'm going to cut the meat into small pieces. Okay. Do that. so far. It's falling right off the... So this has been cooking since around... I would say about 2. 2.15, something like that. to it a few one time I added water to it and like I said I'm gonna check it out after I'm done cutting this meat 
I might have to add a little bit more water and then um, trying to get all the uh, barley off of it. Um, just make sure that there's enough broth. Yeah, I figured I'd make biscuits. I might make a double batch of biscuits. When I make them, I usually make, they usually make around six or seven. I don't know if I should make a double batch or not. I feel like everybody's always looking for another one. I'm gonna taste it, guys, and see. See the verdict. I hope it turns out. Mmm. Nice. Very tender. Yummy. It's bone. Nice and tender, guys. Chuck is a poor man's steak. And that's okay. Jen's gonna have because she's not gonna, she doesn't want this. She's not gonna eat this. And then she had tacos for lunch, so she can't have tacos again for dinner. Even though if I let her, she would. She's gotta have something different. Bill, you gotta taste this meat. It's so tender. All right, guys. So I'm gonna make these homemade biscuits now. I'm just gonna make the one batch because. Honestly, having more than, uh, I can't have too many biscuits in the house because that's not good for me. Because I will eat them. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do two cups of, of flour. Okay, I think I should have two cups in here, hopefully. One. Yeah, I should have two. Right, I'm probably going to have to pour some out. Okay. Let's see. What do I have here? Four. The soup is really all done. Um, the meat is just gonna, I have it on the low covered. The meat's just gonna stay in there and get more tender. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so two cups of flour, um, a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda fourth of a teaspoon 
troisième type. Thank you, so tough. Then one tablespoon of baking powder. Okay, what you do first is I did the, I've made these before, so um, you gotta have cold butter. You know what? These have been sitting out for five minutes, so I'm gonna go get the other stick because I don't want, it has to be cold, cold butter. And you don't touch it with your hand as much as possible because with your hands because then it warms, it warms it up. Okay, so six tablespoons of butter. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six tablespoons of butter. So I'm going to cut these in pretty small pieces. Because then what you do is you break them up. You break them up with your hand. With your hands. Quickly. You have butter going all through the biscuits. Okay. All right, so that's six tablespoons. So what I'm going to do is I remember because I got this recipe from Fallon from Moss Family TV. I made it once and they didn't come out good. They came out all crumbly and I was like, ugh. So I made it again. I messaged her and I, and I got her recipe again. I asked her what I, what, what I was doing wrong. She said maybe a couple of things. She told me. I made it again and they came out really good. I made them a third time and they came out really good. So this is like my fourth time okay. making them. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. So you just gotta do it quickly and get the butter all incorporated because you want little pieces of like butter going all out through the flour. This way it's all incorporated and you get it in every biscuit. And that's how, that's how the muffin becomes really flaky is by that butter breaking up. So hopefully it'll come out good this time. Let's see. Okay. Um, trying to think here. Oh, preheat oven. Yeah, I'm preheating the oven already. Okay. All right, so these seem pretty, pretty broken up. The butter was really nice and cold. So. And then I'm gonna put the buttermilk in. Now, if it calls for a cup of buttermilk, so I made a cup of buttermilk. Again, I made the homemade buttermilk with one cup of milk and one tablespoon of, um, of um, white vinegar. It says you can use white vinegar or lemon. You know, fresh lemon, concentrated lemon or whatever. All right, so now I'm gonna start press putting the, the, um, buttermilk in. And this is where I see I block Fallon and she just goes like this, mixes it all up a couple of times. She doesn't really mix it that well. She mixes it just till it's all mixed. And I know she put some flour on her, um, her hands once she gets it all mixed up because you don't want to over mix these muffin um, biscuits. <laughs> so, they're very wet still. I'm gonna 
put a little bit of flour on my hand so I can get it mixed up the rest of the way. I don't remember them being this wet, but that's what it calls for a cup, two cups of flour, one cup of buttermilk. That's exactly what I did. I'm just need to add a little bit more flour, guys. There we go. So that looks so good. I just can't get it off my fingers, but I will. I gotta go get the pan so I can get these biscuits moving. They take about 15 minutes in the oven. So that's what it's gonna be. Bill, can you come here and, and check this, pause this a minute? He's gonna pause the camera because I can't. Okay, so he's gonna pause it. I'm going to wash my hands and then I'm going to get the pan and bring you guys over to show you. So, I had to get more flour because you need a lot of flour to handle these. Okay, so I'm making them. They're not really. Let's see. We'll get back. They're um, trying to get them as even as possible as far as their, the way they're, um, you know, how big they are, but I don't know if it's going to happen. So it's very important when you when you um, get these like you know into a ball thing or whatever, you got to put add flour to them, dip them in flour. That's what she does. I see all the time, and that's what I'm doing because otherwise they don't. They're very 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 sticky. So flour is a big part of it. Hey, Cooper, Cooper. They're supposed to be very very flaky. See. Very flaky. So that's four. They only make about six. I wonder if I should make more because this family. Everybody loves them. So, um. In that 437. That's right, so. Um, so that's about six, about six biscuits. Charber? No, these are not, these are, these are not red lobster, these are country biscuits. You think six is enough or should I make more? I don't know what that's for dinner, so. I never know what to do, guys. Never know what to do. All right, guys. Now they go in the oven um, for 15 minutes. This way, my son's are gonna hit the pause, hit the red button there. I'll be right back, guys. Yeah, right. So I just took them out. They look perfect. I probably could have got maybe, um, maybe like seven or eight of, or the, of these biscuits because they're very big. But they're supposed to be brown on the bottom. See, brown on the bottom. And this is what Fallon has taught me. From Moss Family TV, you gotta wait. My son's trying to get one already. Butter. Get me one. Get me one of that little spatula in that drawer there. I want to get them off the like up from the pan before they eat it. Look at that 
sacrifice all my heavens. All my heavens. See the plate, guys? Which one do you want? No, that one. This one? Okay. They're so good, guys. So easy to make, too. The recipe's so, so easy. I'll try to remember to put the recipe down below. So simple. So here it is, guys. This is what's for dinner tonight. On Friday, we're having beef barley soup with um, butter, milk, mm, biscuits. Mm. <laughs> so don't forget to hit all those buttons on the bottom, guys, and the notification button with the bell so you guys can be notified every time I put up a video. All right, guys, so um, share and like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.